Hi there, and welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. And today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a very quick and easy cooked eggnog in the Ninja Foodi. I'm using the six and a half quart, but this would work in the eight quart. And in fact, I also just made a cooked eggnog recipe in the Ninja Foodi Hot Cold Blender. So if you want a small amount of eggnog, you can certainly do that in any blender, but I use the hot cold because it's a cooked eggnog, and I will link to that video right up there for you. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is get our eggs out, and they are room temperature. And I'm using 10 eggs. This is a double batch. You can definitely cut it in half if you want, but you are going to wanna watch your temperatures, and I'll get into that in a little bit later. So I'm gonna crack these 10 eggs, and I usually like to do that not directly into the pot of the Ninja Foodi, because in case I get shells, I can get them out a little bit easier if they're right here but you can crack them right in the pot if you want. Ten eggs cracked, and we're just gonna put them right in to the inner pot of the Ninja Foodi. Now, if you don't have a nylon whisk and you're not able to whisk in the pot, whisk your eggs up first, that's no problem, but I have a nylon whisk and I'm just gonna whisk them up with the sugar and the milk. And this is a half of a cup of sugar. And you could use more if you like a little bit sweeter of an eggnog, but I found that this was a good, perfect amount of sweetness for me. And then I have two cups of half and half. You can use whole milk, but I find that the half and half just makes the finished product just a little bit richer, a little bit more decadent, and absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna go ahead and splurge on that and use the two cups of half and half. You could probably even get away with using all heavy cream, but it's not necessary in this recipe. All right, that's all we're gonna add in right now. We're gonna turn the Ninja Foodi on. We're gonna go to the sear saute, and we need to take this all the way down to low. I might adjust that up to low medium, but I'll be taking a temperature and I don't want it to get above 150 to 155 degrees. All right, so while this is heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and start to whisk. We just wanna get these eggs really well blended and I'm gonna pretty much whisk this almost constantly while we heat it up. Now the reason why we're gonna cook this is really for two reasons. One is to make sure that if by chance there was any salmonella in these eggs that we cook it to a temperature of 150 degrees and hold it there for five minutes. Based on my research, that is a temperature that will kill 99.999% of salmonella. And there's such a low risk of that in the eggs that we get now um, that I'm pretty confident that you will be just fine making this recipe. Now, if you're not worried about cooking your eggnog, you don't have to. You can certainly put all of this into a blender or a food processor and blend it up and be done. It'll be delicious. But I also find that cooking to this 150, 155 degree temperature um, and holding it there for five minutes, I find that we get a little bit thicker of an eggnog at the end. All right, this looks pretty good right now. Looks nice and beaten up. I'm still gonna whisk it some more, but I wanna give it a chance. Why is it not? I do this all the time. I bet you do it too. I forgot to hit start. <laughs> oh well, no problem. So I've whisked the eggs. No, I was wondering, I was like, wow, I'm not hearing anything. It doesn't look like it's heating. It should be heating, what's going on? Anyway, it happens, no worries. So turn that, turn it on, hit start, it's important. And we'll let it heat up. This should take, I would say, anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. Um, if that, it might not even take that long. So you heat this up to 150 degrees, and then we want to hold it there for five minutes. All right, 
So I'm gonna go ahead and stop whisking for a few minutes and just let it heat up and take a temperature. We'll see where we are right now. That way we'll have a baseline to go on. So we are only at about 61 degrees. So we've got a little ways to go and that's to be expected. So I'll just wait here until it heats up. All right, I started to hear the pot really starting to heat up. So I don't wanna let this burn, to, not even burn, cook to the bottom. I mean, eggs can cook um, and they usually set at about 160. We're nowhere near that, of course. But anything that's on the very bottom that doesn't get moved around frequently could definitely set up. And then you would have like little pieces of cooked egg in your eggnog and that would not be very delicious. If that does happen to you though, because it certainly can, all you need to do is strain the eggnog at the end. And I would not put it through a fine mesh strainer, just a regular strainer. And you'll be able to get any of those little egg pieces out. But if you just keep whisking, it's not gonna happen. So don't worry about it. And let it settle and then I'll take another temperature. Anytime you whisk it, your temperature is gonna drop just a little bit. Feels like it's getting warm though. All right, we're at about 125, 122, right, 122, 123, right around there. So I'm gonna let it cook just another minute, give it a few more whisks, and then we will get it up to that 150 and hold it for five minutes. And I mentioned before that if you don't have a nylon whisk, that you could whisk up your eggs um, out of the pot and put them in. And you could just use a rubber spatula, heat resistant spatula or scraper or whatever they're called, or even something like this to just stir around and just make sure you kind of move around everything on the bottom just to make sure nothing is getting cooked on down there. But we are looking really good right now. And let's just take a temp. Okay, we're at up at 127. So we still have a little bit, a little bit longer to go. I would say maybe three minutes or so. And I'm gonna let it sit and heat up and then I will whisk it again. It's just kind of a process. Now I was just sitting here thinking, I did some testing with the slow cook function on the Ninja Foodie. And I have times in on my website in the overnight breakfast casserole, I have times and temperatures of what the slow cook function, um, how long it takes to get up to a certain temperature. So I bet that you could even probably use the slow cook function if you refer to those times and just let it slow cook for the amount of time that it takes to get up to that 150. But it's gonna be a little riskier because it could you know, cause the eggs to cook on the bottom. But if you don't have the time to stand here, and you don't mind straining at the end, you could probably do that as well. All right, let's get a quick temp before we introduce that air. Still at 130, just a little under, 128.3. In some spots were like 133. I'm not rushing this. I would rather it take a little bit of time than turn it up to the low medium and all of a sudden have it come to a boil and ruin the eggnog. Uh, because if it really comes to a boil, you're gonna have a really uh, cooked egg kind of texture and that's not gonna be very good. All right, so we have been holding at about 135 for about five minutes and it just doesn't seem like it's getting hotter than that. So even though I really did not wanna do this, I am gonna go up to the next level of heating, which will be low medium. Now, if you need to do this, uh, be very careful with it that we don't get overheated and you're gonna to wanna to whisk quite a bit. So I'm gonna give it a nice whisk right now and then let it heat up just a little bit more. What, what I might do is let it get up to about 155 and then go back to the low so that I know that during the five minutes that we're holding that temperature of at least 150, we don't get up into the 160s and start to cook the eggs. Okay. 
and it's fast because now we're like up to 143. So that happens really fast. So definitely keep an eye on it and get a thermometer if you don't have one. This would be this would be sort of a hard recipe to do if you don't have a thermometer. Not saying it can't be done, but you won't know if you get up to that 150 degrees or not. Now, if you're not worried about the salmonella issue at all, you wouldn't need a thermometer necessarily. I will give you an idea of how long this took and as long as you're whisking and don't let your eggs cook and probably just heat them for about 15 minutes, you're gonna be just fine as far as texture goes with your eggnog. Unfortunately, when we started this process, I didn't think to time it on my phone. And of course, when you're using the sear saute function of the Ninja Foodie, it doesn't give you a time reading. So we don't really know exactly how long we've been going. I'm guessing about 15 minutes so far, but it could have been 10. You know, when you're standing here staring at a pot and whisking it, it, it feels like forever and it's really no time. So what I will do is after the video, we will figure out exactly how long this took and I will get that into the written recipe and you can find um, the written recipe below in the video description. All of my videos have written recipes. They are either, there's either a link in the description or the actual recipes in the description. So you do not have to sit and write everything down. I get a couple emails a week about that. And I uh, just wanna make sure that everybody knows that you don't have to do that. You can get on my website or in the description and get the recipe. All right, so we have now come up to 150 degrees. I'm gonna give it a really good whisk right now. Let it come up to 155. and then I will drop back to that low heat again. And I like to take the temperature several places around the pot. All right, I'm getting some higher readings. Definitely over 155. It was 160 in spot, so I'm gonna constantly stir this while I take this back down to low and then hold this temp of 150 or 155 for five minutes. We're good. We're right under 160. So that's good. Again, some readings of even 165 and one even said 169. So I have no, um, no worries about it dropping below 150 for the next five minutes. So I'm gonna just whisk and whisk. We probably have about three minutes to go now at this point. not start off though on the low medium. You know, it might seem like, oh, okay, let me just jump right up to low medium and speed this up. I would not do that. I'm afraid that you're going to heat up so fast that you are going to um, cook some of the eggs, especially that those that are on the bottom. So I, I really don't advise that. Do it like I did. Start out low and increase up if you need to.
All right, I'm still sitting at about 160, between 160 and 162. And about another minute. And then I will add in the rest of our ingredients, which I'm gonna start with the heavy cream. That's gonna cool this down right away. of heavy whipping cream. This is one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, one teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and a half of a teaspoon of ground cloves. Now, I played around with these seasonings quite a bit. I found that this was the perfect amount of spice for the eggnog, but please do it however you want to. If you want less cinnamon, more cinnamon. You know, you can season it to taste after the fact. No problems. If you don't like cloves, leave them out. Although I found that as I was testing, especially the blender recipe, as I was testing it, there was something missing. And as soon as I added cloves, I was like, light bulb, that was it. It really, really had a very nice balanced flavor. All right, last but not least, let's put in the vanilla. And again, you could add the spices early on. It wouldn't be any, any problems with that. All right, we are done. We have made our eggnog. Now what we need to do is go ahead and turn the Ninja Foodie off and get the pot out because now it has to go into the refrigerator. Now you can, of course, transfer this into another container if you want to. And it's not that hot on top because we were in a high temperature, so I'm not crazy. Well, I might be crazy, but I'm not burning myself. All right, so I'm gonna leave this, I'm gonna leave it right in the pot just because I don't feel like having to um, dirty something else. And this is gonna go into a punch bowl most likely. So I'm just, I'll just chill it right in here and then get it into the punch bowl for serving. Now this, pot is not very full. You could make a triple batch of this easy in the six quart, and you could probably quadruple it in the eight quart. The issue will be how long it takes to get up to that 150 degrees, if you're concerned about that. If you're not, then no worries at all. All right, I guess I should probably let this cool down just a little bit. Um, I would hate to trap in a lot of steam, raise the temperature inside, and then have it cook my eggs before it starts to cool down. That would be horrible, wouldn't it? You go back and you open up the lid and all of a sudden now you've got like, you know, eggnog scrambled eggs. It could happen. But after it cools down a little bit, I'm gonna use this silicone lid to cover mine. But you could cover it with, um, I have those other covers that I use a lot. There's a big one that goes over the whole pot that you can find in my Amazon store. This is in my Amazon store. Or you could just cover it with foil. Or you could just put a dish rag over it, you know, as long as it's clean, a flour sack or something like that, and put it over. Or you could even put it in the refrigerator uncovered. The choice is yours. Just chill it because it is better served cold. Although I've been tasting it warm and it's pretty good. It's just better chilled. All right, so we have been chilling the eggnog, and you wanna do that at least four hours, but overnight is even better. So if you make it the day before you need it, um, you'll be good to go. And then I just like give it a little stir and blend all the ingredients back together. Now, of course, we didn't put any alcohol in this eggnog, but you can certainly do that. You can put any kind of um, alcohol or whiskey that you like to put in yours. I think some people even put rum in their eggnog, whatever you like. I'm not a fan of eggnog, period, honestly, um, but I really don't like it with alcohol in it. But I found this pecan whiskey. It's a Revel Stoke roasted pecan flavored whiskey. And it is so delicious in this eggnog. I'm not a huge fan of it otherwise, like, you know, on the rocks or anything, but it is absolutely delicious in the eggnog. If you can find it, give it a try. Another brand that is superb is William Wolf Pecan Whiskey. So if you can find those, pick one up and give it a try with your eggnog because it's absolutely 
delicious. It's so delicious that this bottle is almost gone because I've had to test so many batches of this. And my husband likes it too. All right, so let's, hopefully I don't make a mess here. Ordinarily, I would probably, I don't know what I would do. Pour it in or, I'm not sure. But anyway, we're gonna try it. Oh look, I didn't, I didn't make a mess. Yay! Now you can fancy this up some if you want. You can put whipped cream on top. I mean, you could put some um, little fresh grated nutmeg if you want, but I think it's beautiful just the way it is. You could put a cinnamon stick in there, but I happen to think it just looks pretty and festive just like it is. You can see all the spices. It's a beautiful color. Um, and one other tip, if you wanted to make it a little bit more uh, on the yellowy side, you can do that by adding some turmeric. I did see that in, as an ingredient that was in some of the store-bought uh, varieties. I didn't choose to put it in this because I just happen to like the way it looks. I think it's very pretty just like it is. All right, doesn't matter what it looks like though, let's give it a taste. That's good. And I am not a huge fan of eggnog. That is good, really good. It's got a great balance of spices. It's not real thick, so if you like a really thick eggnog, this may not be the recipe for you. But it's not like super thin. I mean, it's definitely thicker than milk. It's not quite as thick as heavy cream, but kind of like somewhere right in the middle, which is how I prefer it. Mm. It's good though. It is so much better than store-bought in my opinion. I definitely would spend the time making it. And somebody pointed out in one of my Facebook groups that eggnog is really pretty pricey. So I would think that if you can get a good deal on heavy cream and half and half and, and eggs, that this is pretty inexpensive to make, honestly. And you can make a huge batch of it um, and serve it at a party. It would be fantastic. I really hope you give this recipe a try. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, you can do that by hitting the subscribe button below or at the end of the video, it will be over there. And you can hit the notification bell and you will be notified when I put out new videos. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, cheers.